Goblin launch detected. Uh-oh. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic Goblin Gang. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game is a Jersey Boy special with Harry playing Titania. He keeps Tectonic Edge, Crop Rotation, Castle Garen Rig, Rishkar's Expertise, Nylee's Intervention, and a Snow-Covered Forest. Frank is unfortunately back playing Tessa, keeping Nylee, Phyrexian Altar, Grave Pact, Two Swamps, a Plains, and a Reliquary Tower. Mike is playing Brutoclad, keeping Temple of Epiphany, Steam Vents, Exotic Orchard, Two Islands, Angrass Marauders, and Cyclonic Rift. Trevor is playing Nicol Bolas, keeping Brainstorm, Temple of Epiphany, Underground Sea, Mountain, Temple of Deceit, Dissipate, and Chaos Warp. Harry wins the die roll and starts us off. Harry plays a snow-covered forest and casts an expedition map. Frank plays a swamp. Trevor plays a tap Temple of Epiphany, scrying one and bottoming it. Mike follows Trevor's lead, playing a Temple of Epiphany as well, and does the same. Harry plays a Castle Garenbrig, passing. Frank drops a Plains, and pays one of each color for Eilie. Trevor plays a Temple of Deceit, which comes in tapped, and scries once again. Mike plays a tap Steam Vents. Harry cracks his map at the end of Mike's turn to find a land. He reveals a Prismatic Vista, putting it to hand. Harry draws, and plays the Vista as his land for turn, passing. Frank draws, and plays a Reliquary Tower. He pays 3 for Phyrexian Altar, and moves to combat. He swings Eily at Harry, and Frank then passes, with Trevor using Brainstorm at the end of turn. Trevor's turn has him playing a Polluted Delta, and cracking it, losing 1. He announces he'll go and find a Volcanic Island, but shortcuts first to playing at Aristic Study, and passing to Mike while searching. Mike plays an Exotic Orchard, and taps 3 to cast an Activate Wayfarer's Bobble. He doesn't pay the 1, so Trevor gets to draw once he's done shuffling. Mike then passes, with Harry sacrificing the Prismatic Vista to lose 1 and find a Snow-Covered Forest. Harry then pays the Study Tax as he casts Crop Rotation, sacrificing another land to go and find one to put to field. It's Ancient Tomb. Harry draws and plays a Thespian Stage. He then pays 2 and casts Nature's Claim to blow up the Study, and Trevor gains 4 and Harry passes. Frank plays a Swamp and brings out Tessa. He moves to combat, hitting Harry with Eilie and passing turn. Trevor draws and plays an Underground Sea. He taps 4 for Nicol Bolas Ravager, who enters and forces Trevor's opponents to discard a card. Trevor then passes. Mike plays an Island and taps enough for Fabricate. He tutors 4 and reveals his copy of Proteus Staff, passing to Harry. Harry plays a Dust Bowl as his land for turn, and taps out taking 2 to cast Nylea's Intervention where X is 4. He passes while searching. Frank plays a tap Godless Shrine for turn, while Harry reveals the lands he found. It's Gaia's Cradle, Cavern of Souls, Command Beacon, and City of Traitors. Frank then does some of his own tutoring by casting Recruiter of the Guard, and goes at Harry again with Tessa and Eile. Frank then tutors from the Recruiter, and reveals Grim Harrispex once he finds it. Trevor plays a Mountain, and casts an Izzet Signet. He then goes at Harry with Nicol Bolas Ravager, connecting and passing. Mike plays another Island for turn, and taps out for Brutoclad. He moves to combat, making a Mirror Token, and passes to Harry. Harry plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Elemental. He then casts Titania, taking two from tapping his Ancient Tomb, and brings back the Prismatic Vista once she enters. 
He then casts a Sylvan Library, passing. Frank draws, and plays the Grim Harrispex he tutored for. He goes at Trevor this time for four, and Trevor takes the hit. Frank then passes, which prompts Trevor to drop Snapcaster Mage at the end of turn, and flash back his Brainstorm. Trevor casts his poor man's dig through time, resolving a drawn from dreams, keeping two of his top seven. He plays an untapped steam vent, taking two, and taps it for soul ring. He then goes at Harry once more with Nickel Bolas, passing. Mike plays a land, and resolves his Proteus staff. He activates it, and sacrifices the mirror token. He reveals off the top of Magmatic Force, which is a fun card. He then moves to combat, making a mirror token, and Harry cracks the Vista, losing one, to find a snow-covered forest, and gains a token from Titania seeing a land get sacrificed. Harry's upkeep has Mike gaining his Force Trigger, and he targets the Grim Harrispex. Responding to this, Frank sacrifices the Recruiter to Eilie, gaining two life, and gets two triggers to draw a card from the Grim Harrispex because of Tasa being out. He then sacrifices the Harrispex to Eilie, gaining more life. Harry then taps enough for Azusa in his main phase, and plays out a Tectonic Edge, Gaia's Cradle, and then City of Traitors. He taps 6 mana for Rishkar's expertise, which Trevor counters with Dissipate. With the counter on the stack, Harry cracks the Tectonic Edge to blow up Volcanic Island, and gets a token with Titania. Moving to combat, Harry swings his commander, and the token he made last turn at Trevor. Trevor blocks Titania with the Snapcaster Mage, but takes 5, and Harry passes. Frank's upkeep has Mike pinging Azusa with the Force, and Frank then draws and plays a land. He casts Smothering Tithe, and goes at Trevor with Eilie. Trevor untaps, and Mike's Force steals 3 to Titania on Trevor's upkeep. Trevor then draws for turn, and plays a Drowned Catacomb. He doesn't pay the 2 for Frank's Tithe, so Frank gets a treasure, and Trevor then hits Harry with Nickel Bullis, who has to take the hit. And in his second main phase, Trevor then plays a God Eternal Kefnet, followed by Solemn Simulacrum. He goes to find a basic from the Solemn Trigger, passing as he searches. Mike bolts Eilie with his Force Trigger in his upkeep, and draws, not paying the two. He then taps enough for Sahili's Artistry, making a token copy of Trevor's Solemn, and a token copy of Magmatic Force. Frank responds with the targets on the stack, though, and uses D-Spark to exile the Magmatic Force. Mike does still get a Solemn Simulacrum token, and he moves to combat, making a mere token, and then has all of his tokens become a copy of the Solemn token for a total of three of them, and he passes to Harry. Harry uses his library trigger, which pleases Frank since he gets three treasures as a result, to try and dig himself out of the hole that everyone else has put him in. He then plays a command beacon, and cracks it to bring Titania back to hand, and then realizes the City of Traitors should be gone from playing a land, but asks if it's okay if he floats the mana, which the table is fine with. He then casts Titania, bringing back the beacon, and goes to combat. He swings at Trevor with the tokens, and Trevor blocks one with Solemn, drawing as it dies, and taking five. Harry then plays out Eternal Witness in his post-combat main phase, bringing back Nylea's intervention. He casts the second mode of the intervention to damage flyers, and takes two to the Ancient Tomb. This has Nicol Bolas getting taken out, and Kefnet as well, who Trevor puts third from the top, and Harry passes. Frank draws, and has a bunch of mana now with those treasures. He drops Grave Pact, and then uses some lands and treasures to cast Rally the Ancients, bringing back Eilie, the Grim Harrispex, and the Recruiter. With the Recruiter hitting the field, he gets to go and tutor for another creature card, and Frank reveals the Zulaport Cutthroat after not shutting up about it for an hour while he searches. He then casts it with his treasures, and swings Tesa at Trevor, and passes turn. Trevor draws, and doesn't pay the two for the tithe. He casts Volcanic Vision, targeting Dissipate, which returns the instant to his hand, and will deal three to each creature. Frank responds to this, sacrificing the Recruiter to the altar, triggering Grave Pact, and forcing his opponents to sacrifice two creatures, plus draw two cards from the Grim Harrispex. He also drains each opponent for one twice. He then does it again for Eilie, repeating the process from before, 
and Harry points out that he should have three more treasures from Mike drawing three cards with his solemn tokens dying. Frank then sacrifices the cutthroat, drawing two, and draining each opponent for two while gaining two. Trevor then passes turn, having done less than Frank did in his own turn. Mike draws and casts Talisman of Creativity. He announces to Frank that he didn't pay the tithe, and then drops Stranglehold, passing. Harry uses his library, and Frank gains his treasures. He doesn't keep any extras, and cracks the command beacon to put Titania to hand, recasting her and bringing the beacon back. Harry then plays a fabled passage as his land for turn, and passes. Frank draws and goes through his yard. He uses a bunch of his treasures to cast Shieldred, and then goes at Trevor again with Tessa. In his second main phase, he plays a Temple of Silence, and bottoms the card, and then drops Yeheni before announcing he'll end his turn. At the end of turn, Trevor uses Chaos Warp on Shouldred. Frank shuffles it in, and then reveals off the top Razaketh, which is actually much, much worse for the table. Trevor untaps and draws. He plays Cavern of Souls, naming dragons, and then casts Deliver into Evil. He makes a pile of four cards from his graveyard, and has Harry choose what to give him. Harry gives him back Nicol Bolas Ravager and Chaos Warp. And Trevor then casts Nicol Bolas once he's got him back in hand, who hits the field and makes his opponent discard a card, and Trevor passes. Mike drops a Mimic Fat in his main phase, and then plays an Expedition map. He passes to Harry, who at the end of turn, cracks his Fabled Passage. He doesn't get to find a land though because of Stranglehold, but does take advantage of the Shuffle and gets a token from Titania. Harry uses his library, and Frank gains more treasures. He doesn't keep any extras, playing what he draws, and we see a Ghost Quarter come into play. He goes to combat, swinging at Trevor. Before moving to blocks, Trevor uses Chaos Warp and targets Razaketh. Frank quickly responds, sacrificing Yeheni to Razaketh, losing two, and only realizing that he can't tutor after Mike declares he'll take Yeheni with a Bat Trigger. They do have to resolve his two Grave Pack Triggers though, and this basically fogs Harry's combat step since he no longer has creatures that are attacking. Frank then finishes shuffling in Razaketh, and we see a counterless Hangerback Walker come into play and die immediately. Harry then sacrifices Command Beacon in his post-combat main phase to return Titania to hand, and then casts her, bringing it back to the field with her Enter the Battlefield trigger. Frank draws, and uses all of his treasures to cast Kakusho. He sacrifices the dragon once it's resolved to the altar, and gets two on death triggers from Tessa being out. Harry's about to die at this point, and uses Ghost Quarter to blow up Frank's land, and then uses Dust Bowl to blow up another one after paying the cost to do so on his way out. This has Harry dying in the end, with Frank gaining a bunch of life, and Mike being cheeky, stealing the dragon to the Mimic Bat trigger. And Frank uses the mana floating from the altar, plus some lands, for an Ameria Shepherd. He then plays a Plains, which brings back the Grim Harrisbex to the field, and he swings Tessa at Mike. This has Mike activating the bat, putting out a token copy of Kakusha to block with. Frank is less than happy as he sacrifices Tessa for value to the altar. Tessa then heads to the command zone, and Kakusho then dies at the end of turn, draining Frank and Trevor for 5, which also finishes Trevor off, while Mike gains 10. Mike also cracks his expedition map to find an island and put it to hand. Mike untaps and draws. Frank gets a treasure, and Mike then passes, holding his mana open. Frank untaps and draws. He plays a Plains, which has the Shepherd bringing Eilie back with its landfall trigger, and he casts a Lenda, which is countered by Mike with a counterspell. Frank then uses Eilie's second ability as he sacrifices the Harrispex to her to try and exile the Mimic Fat. Before this resolves, Mike puts out a token copy of Kakusho, but has to sacrifice it to the Grave Pack trigger, and drains Frank for five, and then exiles the Mimic Fat. Moving to combat, Frank then hits Mike with the Shepherd, passing. Mike untaps and draws. He thinks about how he can get out from underneath the Eilie and Grave Pack triggers, and realizes he needs bounce spells that he just doesn't think he has in his deck anymore. Frank reassures him that he plans on doing even more nonsense involving tokens from the Hanger Back Walker, and Mike is pretty content to scoop it up to Frank at this point and move on to the next game. Game review time. So, two things I want to get out of the way first. I think that actually the first time Mike sacrificed Kakusho, that was actually a misplay. It's exile and not sacrifice, 
which means that Trevor wouldn't have died that turn, but he would have died at least on Mike's subsequent turn when he had to sacrifice the Kakusho token to the Grave Pack trigger. People are also going to probably wonder why he scooped when he had that Cyclonic Rift since his opening hand, and frankly, I have to kind of admire him for it. He really didn't want to use it because it just would have stalled out the game and made it longer. He knew when he was beat, and that it would be a real uphill battle to be able to get out from underneath of Frank's softlock. Other than that, people seem to hate on Harry early on, but like I've said in other games, you really can't give Harry any kind of leeway since his decks are typically very optimized and he's a great player. He will find any opening and twist it to his advantage, often winning the game as a result. Trevor's Nickel Bolas deck is probably his most tame deck, but it's also his most on-theme deck. I really enjoy seeing it, and it's a shame he didn't get to use more of his dragon-based spells, because that's a lot of fun to see. I know I give Frank a hard time, but I do enjoy playing with him and when he's on camera. His Taysa deck did a lot of the stuff that Taysa wants to do, which was have triggers get doubled when things died, and he did it really well. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.